In the previous few videos, we have talked about myeloproliferative disorders. So we have discussed polycythemia vera and essential thrombocytosis. Today, let's talk about primary myelofibrosis. So let's get started. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis. So there is myeloproliferative disorder and lymphoproliferative disorders, such as leukemia, lymphoma, etc. In the myeloproliferative, all of the cell lines are increased, but one of them is super dominant. So in polycythemia vera, lots of red blood cells. In cases of CML, lots of neutrophils. In cases of essential thrombocytosis, we have lots of platelets. How about primary myelofibrosis? This is the topic of today's video, so wait! Myeloproliferative neoplasms or myeloproliferative disorders include CML, CNL, CEL, PV, which is polycythemia vera, primary myelofibrosis, essential thrombocytosis. We have talked about CML before, we've talked about polycythemia vera, essential thrombocytosis, and today let's talk about primary myelofibrosis. So myeloproliferative neoplasm, a disease of the elderly. Unlike Hodgkin's or Burkitt's, these are diseases of the young. All cell lines are affected, but one of them is dominant, is affected the most. That's why the bone marrow is hypercellular. It's working like crazy. Sometimes it's not enough. We need extra medullary hematopoiesis. By extra medullary, we usually mean the spleen. So you'll have splenomegaly. But in cases of primary myelofibrosis, splenomegaly is kind of rare. Cool. Rapid cell turnover, meaning that nucleus is being destroyed and rebuilt, destroyed, rebuilt, etc. Increasing purine metabolism, increased uric acid, precipitated attacks of gout. All of them can transform into acute leukemia, especially acute myeloid leukemia. And they can transform into each other. So PV can lead to myelofibrosis, essential thrombocytosis can lead to BV and can lead to myelofibrosis, etc. Usually they have genetic problems. In case of CML, it's 922 translocation. In case of CNL, it's the 1519 translocation. In case of PV, PMF, and ET, there is the V617F mutation activation of the JAK2 kinase, the manipulative guy. And in mastocytosis, it's the C-kit. What other disease involves C-kit mutation? Let me know down below in the comments. So what happens when you activate the JAK2 kinase? As you know, JAK2 is very manipulative. That's why I call it, ta-da. So it will stimulate erythropoietin and thrombopoietin receptor okay, leading to overstimulation of the receptor, increased number of red blood cells and platelets. And if you have lots of red blood cells, there is no reason to produce EPO. And if you have lots of platelets, there is no reason to produce TPO, thrombopoietin, erythropoietin. So let's talk about primary myelofibrosis, one of the myeloproliferative disorders. So these things are increased in the beginning but later they can decrease due to fibrosis. It's a clonal malignancy. There is hyperplasia, so wait for it, of atypical megakaryocytes, because you were asking yourself if polycythemia vera is red blood cells and essential thrombocytosis is platelets, CML is the neutrophils, how about the primary myelofibrosis answer? Atypical megakaryocytes leading to monoclonal proliferation of fibroblasts. Guess what will they do? They are called fibroblast. Blast means growth. So fibroblast will mean fibrosis of the bone marrow. That's why we call it myelofibrosis. Bone marrow is working like crazy in the beginning. Later, there is fibrosis. So in the beginning, there is panmyelosis, which means Increased number of red blood cells, increased number of platelets, increased number of white blood cells. Later, there is pancytopenia, decreased number of red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. That's why we call it myelofibrosis with myeloid 
metaplasia. Wow. There is extra medullary hematopoiesis leading to splenomegaly. Very nice. When these cells are increased in the blood early on in the course of the disease, you can have hyperviscosity syndrome with its classic symptoms, visual disturbance, neurological problems, and bleeding. We divide the clinical picture and the lab into early on, then later. Early on, it's working like crazy. Later, it's fibrosed. Boom. So, early on, working like crazy. Panmyelosis. You have lots of red blood cells, including immature nucleated red blood cells. You have the promyelocytes, again, immature. You have the myeloblast, again, immature. You have bizarre looking platelets because it's working like crazy. It's pushing everybody outside, including some abnormal cells. You can have hepatosplenomegaly, absolutely, because it's working like crazy and it needs help from the extra medullary sites. You can have gout due to increased uric acid due to rapid cell turnover. You can have high LAD, LDH and high ALP, alkaline phosphatase. Later, there is fibrosis, there is pancytopenia, and you will have the sad, miserable teardrop cell because the bone marrow is fibrosed and these cells are crying. The marrow is shedding tears of red blood cells. They are called the teardrop cells. If you have pancytopenia, you will have anemia. So you will have anemia symptoms, fatigue, pallor, tired and pale, pale and tired, etc. If you have leukopenia, you will have infections. You can have dry tap on bone marrow aspiration, which means the doctor is sticking the thick needle into the patient in order to get a bone marrow biopsy. But when he draws the needle, there is nothing there. There is no biopsy whatsoever. He didn't get any tissue sample. Why? Because the bone marrow is fibrosed. There is increased reticulin. We call this inaspirable marrow. Only doctors use these terms. If you open the dictionary, it's probably not there. On x-ray, you can find osteosclerosis because the bone marrow is gone. How to treat primary myelofibrosis? Start with supportive treatment. If there is splenomegaly, remove the spleen. If you have fibroblasts, steroids can deal with them. If you have gouty symptoms or high uric acid, give allopurinol, which inhibits the xanthine oxidase enzyme. Then you can shift to chemo, low-dose thalidomide and prednisone. We used thalidomide for what else? The answer is multiple myeloma. Good guys. The definitive therapy is allogenic bone marrow transplant. Complications of primary myelofibrosis, pancytopenia later in the disease, malignant transformation to AML. Causes of secondary myelofibrosis. So in this video, we have talked about primary myelofibrosis when you have cancer. Okay, it's a primary condition. But secondary myelofibrosis is when you start with a certain disease and this disease will lead to bone marrow fibrosis. This disease could be polycythemia vera, essential thrombocytosis. There are many other causes of secondary myelofibrosis. Please let me know the answer in the comment section. So let me help you by answering this question that I've told you in an earlier video. So you have a 67 year old male come to your clinic because he had severe pain in his left big toe, probably gout. Night, yes, because gouty pain is more at night. He said, Doc, it was so bad and I don't even drink alcohol. That's a very knowledgeable patient. Okay, he's very informed um, because drinking alcohol can increase gouty attacks. Uh, that's why we used to call it the disease of kings. Why? Because kings used to be fat, they eat a lot of meat, and they drink lots of alcohol. Alcohol was not for everybody back in those days. It was so expensive. It was for the rich, baby. Whenever I take hot shower, I feel so itchy afterwards. Hoo hoo hoo. This is called what? This is called aquatic, which means water, pruritus, which means itching. On physical exam, there is hepatosplenomegaly. Hemoglobin is 18. Oh, this is a lot. Hematocrit is also high. Cool. What do you ex Not cool for the patient. What do you expect to see on bone marrow biopsy? Normal. Clonal plasma cells more than 10%. Hypercellular marrow with panmyelosis. Hypocellular marrow or a myeloblast more than 20%. 
So what first, what's the diagnosis? If you have aquatic pruritus, increased hemoglobin and hematocrit, hepatosplenomegaly, this is polycythemia vera, when you have lots of red blood cells running around and you will have low EPO. Now let's answer the question. What do you expect the bone marrow? It's working like crazy. So it's not normal. This is wrong. Clonal plasma cells more than 10%. This is multiple myeloma, baby. Hypercellular marrow with pan myelosis. Yes, hypercellular because it's working like crazy. Every single cell line is increased called hypercellular. Pan myelosis. Pan means extended. Myelosis means myeloid cell condition. So increased number of myeloid cells or the, the children of myeloid cells. So C is the correct answer. Hypocellular marrow, this is marrow fibrosis, for example, aplastic anemia and stuff like that. Myeloblast greater than 20%, this is probably a myeloid leukemia. And depending on the age, this guy is old, it's probably chronic myeloid leukemia. This is just my guess, but the answer is C. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Facebook. If you'd like to get a copy of these notes, you can go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. And as a bonus video, we're going to talk about ESR, erythrocyte sedimentation rate, because lots of students have asked me to make a video on it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.